What's up athletes? This man hits so fast, he could win by literally aiming straight at your face. But it wasn't just the raw power in Roddick's serve that made it so deadly. It was also heavy, with spin rates rivaling that of Sampras, and it was accurate. When this man was on, there was nothing you could do but stare at the ball. Today, we're breaking down one of the most explosive service actions of all time. And make sure to stick around to the end because we're also covering what you can copy from Roddick to add a few miles per hour to your serve. Roddick used a version of the abbreviated backswing type. His hitting elbow was high and away from his body instead of dropping down like you'd see on the typical classic or staggered backswing types. And if you don't know what the three backswing types are, go check out this video here. Now, from here, his hands are going to be extremely relaxed and Roddick is starting with his hands roughly at his abdomen area with his racket tip pointing slightly down. And this is because his hitting wrist is very relaxed and he's allowing it to go into this slightly flexed position like you'll see on Raonic or Kyrgios' serve. From here, he takes both of his hands up together until he's released the ball and his hitting hand is at about his head level. Then he'll continue extending up with his tossing hand while his hitting arm drops into that infamous Roddick trophy position. This is where his hitting elbow is going to be drawn up and away from his body to the side like this and then his hitting elbow is going to be bent. Now this is similar to the position that you'll see almost all pro servers reach. We call it the pre-throw position. But what separates Roddick is that his forearm, instead of being straight up like this, is actually going to be pointing sideways so that it's parallel to the court. Now, why is this so powerful, you might ask? Good question. To understand what makes Roddick serve so special, let's compare him to a few others that also use the abbreviated backswing. You see, Roddick isn't the only player on tour using the abbreviated backswing. You had Nadal and Monfils when they started, you have Gasquet, you had Djokovic for a time, and now you've got Ali Asim and Kasper Ruud doing the same. But everyone here using the abbreviated backswing type will start with their hands in a lower position and never raise their hands quite as high during their backswing. And instead of from here dropping their racket down and internally rotating at the shoulder, they'll typically end with their form more straight up toward the sky. This is the critical detail that separates Roddick from others using the abbreviated backswing. Because now Roddick has space to actively externally rotate at his shoulder, which helps him to build more momentum with his racket head, which creates a deeper racket drop and eventually that leads to more racketed speed at contact. Interestingly, not even young Roddick had adopted this technique. For example, in his 1999 Easter Bowl final, his racket tip points up and his forearm is more vertical to the court. Now, most great servers are actually also going to use an active rotation from their shoulder. It just happens at a slightly different time. If you look at Sampras, Ivanisevic, Isner, Karlovic, or Kyrgios, you'll see that they're all going to start with their racket tip pointing more down toward the court. And from here, that rotation from their shoulder is going to happen more gradually throughout their backswing so that as they enter their trophy position, their racket head is going to have momentum while their hitting arm is relaxed. And you can feel this for yourself by just starting with your racket tip pointing down like so. And as you bring your elbow up and bend it, feel that shoulder rotating back. And what you'll notice is if your shoulder rotates back like so, your racket tip is going to go from pointing down toward the court to up like this. And if you do this for yourself, you'll be able to feel how they're able to generate momentum in the racket while staying relaxed. Now, in contrast to this, Roddick, as he entered his prime, uses what we like to call the runway method, which is pretty unique from all the other servers that we've ever seen. Because Roddick is gonna start this active external shoulder rotation at the start of his acceleration, or when his legs begin to straighten. And that means it needs to happen a lot faster and that makes his entire motion more abrupt and forceful, which is why it can look violent at times. Now, an important note here is that Roddick is not doing active external rotation the whole time. He's not trying to drive it down into this forced racket drop position. That'll just lead to tightness. This is happening at the very start of his swing, but it's likely that the rest of that deep racket drop you see is happening from his arm being relaxed and him using his entire body correctly. 
And this is what I would recommend for you to copy from Roddick Serve. Not the, the fancy backswing or this active rotation, but keeping your arm relaxed and learning how to use your full body to accelerate like Roddick does. And for all the other players with the abbreviated backswing that aren't using this runway method like Roddick, well, they're just losing out on free racketed speed that they could get from the staggered or classical backswing types, which I suspect is probably why most players end up going with a larger backswing, whether it's the classical or the staggered. So why haven't other players used a Roddick-esque backswing? Well, first of all, we can't discount that many, including TV announcers, have criticized his take back and said that it causes a huge strain or danger on the shoulder rotator cuff. Peter, many people have wondered how long Andy Roddick can get away with this service motion. Obviously, it just gets a tremendous amount of pace on the ball, but puts a lot of pressure on that rotator cuff. Yes. Is it true? Well, Roddick did have a couple injuries throughout his career, including a shoulder injury, but it was never really serious enough to keep him out of the game for so long. So overall, I think he did pretty good. And I'd say Roddick's risks with his shoulder or the rest of his body had more to do with his serving strategy. I mean, it doesn't matter what technique you use. If you try to hit 130 or 140 miles per hour on every serve, you're risking an overuse injury. Basically, the more force you try to generate through arm speed, the more load it's gonna put on the joints controlling that movement. I saw this best put by Ryan Croden, who specializes in arm care for baseball pitchers. It doesn't matter whatever the age is, we wanna increase the pounds of total arm force relative to the maximum miles per hour that you can throw. It's like imagine, you know, your ligaments and your tendons are a bridge between two pieces of land and those pieces of land are moving away from each other. Well, it's putting tension on the bridge. If you don't have reinforcement over the bridge, it's gonna damage. So I say just maximize the strength, man, early on. So whether we're looking at Roddick, Kyrgios, or Sampras, or any of these other huge servers, it's true that their serves contributed to injuries that they had at times. I mean, these athletes are taking their bodies to the max. And when you take your body to the max for long periods of times over years, then you lead to overuse eventually. The key question though is, do you get injured serving at 95 miles per hour or at 120 miles per hour? Because for most players that are using inefficient techniques, 95 miles per hour is their max. Maybe more like 70, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but what if 95 miles felt effortless and it was really when you went 100 plus that you had to put in a little bit more effort? And this is why I recommend that before anything, prioritize the efficiency of your service technique. That means don't try to serve faster by swinging harder. You might squeeze a few miles per hour from that, but you'll likely lose consistency in the process and your serve will start feeling tense. If you can develop an efficient service motion, for most players I see, just by improving their service technique and making it more efficient, they would be able to improve their base serve speed. And on that note, we actually made a full five day serve video series with cues, drills, and all of that in order to add power to your serve while also increasing your consistency. So go check that out in the first link in the description below. Here's what everybody's saying about it already. I know you're gonna love it. So let's tie this all back to our original question. Why aren't there pros out there copying Roddick's service technique? And if these pros aren't doing it, what can you learn from Roddick to add a few miles to your serve? Well, first of all, copying exactly what Roddick does would require a good deal of strength and flexibility. Because if you're jerking your arm back into this position, but you don't have the flexibility to go into a deep racket drop, then the technique is not very useful. But I would say this doesn't matter so much. What's more important is the coordination of your swing with your body. And you can hear it from the man himself. The commonality between the best servers of all time, whether it's Pete, Boris Becker, Gorman Ivanizovic, is, is, is the leg bending and being able to coordinate a massive bend in the legs up, but being able to do it all timing-wise also. You see, Roddick is able to coordinate his body accelerating while keeping his arm relaxed and letting his rocket drop so far back. And that's what allows him to effortlessly transfer that force up into the racket at contact. So even if you can't get Roddick's level of external rotation, most players aren't maximizing their racket drop or the relaxation or the fluidity of their motion. And they either tighten up or have hitches in their swing. Here are a few ways that might be happening on your serve right now. As you toss the ball up, 
Your racket strings could be opening up early, aka the waiter's tray. Number two, your hitting arm can be straightening out early and that will easily cause tightness and decrease your racket drop. Or number three, your racket starts dropping behind you before you begin your leg drive. And this is what we call the back scratch serve. And to fix all of these problems, we can take a lesson from Roddick and start in what we call the pre-throw position. Remember, this is gonna be where your arm is drawn up and away from your body and your hitting elbow is gonna be bent like this. And whether you go into this internally rotated position or you keep your arm up, is not as important as whether you're able to coordinate your swing with your body and keep your arm relaxed. And that's what we're really working on here. From here, focus on driving your hitting shoulder up and feel that naturally create this racket drop action, like so. And once you master this coordination of your racket staying relaxed, your legs creating this racket drop, then you can start to experiment with all the backswing types, whether you wanna go with Roddick, or you can do more of a classical or staggered backswing type. And as many people credit Roddick's serve speed to his golden arm, there's actually something much more powerful and important in his serve that we haven't covered yet. You see, within every serve, there are multiple power sources. We call these the core power moves. And Roddick has been able to maximize these core power moves more than almost anyone else in history. It's something that he played around with throughout his entire career and he perfected as he entered his prime. And if you want us to break that down in depth in the next video, let me know in the comments below. And if this video gets three likes, we'll make it. You can tell we really wanna make it. We already made it. Go like the video. <laughs> and in the meantime, if you haven't already, go check out the five day surf power challenge if you really wanna take your surf to the next level. And as always athletes, until next time, I'll see you, wait, how did I mess that up? Until next time, go out and train hard. I will see you in the next video.